Attention! This makes absolutely no sense. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sanders Facts. Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome into the latest edition of the Xander Specs Podcast. I am, of course, the aforementioned Xander, and we are all in with episode 76 of the podcast here on Wednesday, September 14th. Thank you all for listening. We have got a big podcast this week. We are talking financial topics. Actually, just one, but we talk about a lot of financial topics on the podcast. So this week, we are talking about crypto cryptocurrency because you may not know about it but you've heard about it all over the place so that's what our big topic is this week and of course i'm going to get into what happened in our first full weekend of football in 2022 over the past weekend it was pretty exciting and it's going to be exciting when i explain it to you if you don't know what happened and even if you do we will relive the past few days together oh yay here on the zaders facts podcast so that's what we got coming up this week on the podcast. So remember, if you like the Xander's Facts podcast, if you think you're going to like all the facts that I've got for you on this week's edition, remember to follow the podcast, download this episode, episode 76, rate the podcast, review the podcast, then go on all our socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you're already on them anyway. So check out Xander's Facts, that's Xander with a Z. And most importantly, you got to tell all your friends, spread the facts! Xander's Facts Podcast. Spread the facts. Tell all your friends. And then, while you're telling all your friends, tell them to go read Xander's Weekend Facts, the newsletter that comes out every Sunday morning. It is linked in this episode's description. You should go do that. You should go tell them to listen to any of our past episodes, and you can find a bunch of our past episodes, including this episode, on YouTube. Xander's Facts is on YouTube. It's also linked to this episode's description. And we've got all the Xander's Facts links that you need in the Xander's Facts link tree which is also linked in this episode's description for all the social media, for all the places you can listen to the podcast, for YouTube, for Xander's Weekend Facts, for our new pages, Xander's Facts Sporting Club, and Xander's Facts Votes on Instagram, which you should also go check out and follow, by the way. Go do those things. It's all on the Xander's Facts link tree, which is linked in this episode's description. So go check it out. So this week, we are talking financial topics. Before we get to the football at the end of the podcast, we're getting into economic issues, the economy, financial stuff, because everyone loves it apparently when I talk financial stuff, because our episode that we did a couple weeks ago or months now, it was in June, episode 67, you know, the one where I explained all the inflation and the gas prices, because there's a lot of misinformation going on about how those things happen. And I debunked all the misinformation on that podcast. And I got to tell you, looking at the numbers, because I actually get numbers for the podcast, for the episodes, that podcast, episode 67, It's the Economy Stupid, was the best performing podcast for Xander's Facts all summer. How about that? So a lot of people wanted to hear what I had to say about that. And we're going to talk about the economy again. A couple weeks ago, I talked about Elon Musk, our guy, and all the rich people. Wealth inequality, that did pretty well too. And this week, we are talking about crypto. Do you know your crypto? Probably not. And that's why I'm doing this podcast, because cryptocurrency has been all the rage the last few weeks, months, years. But you probably don't know much about it. You're like, what is this thing? I have no clue. Well, this podcast is here to explain it to you. This week, we are taking a look at all the nitty-gritty stuff about cryptocurrency. For the last few years, it has been the craze online in the real world, and you've probably gotten swept up in all the mania. Maybe. You might have some crypto, like Xander, because to be fully honest, full disclosure, I do own a bit of crypto myself. I am kind of an expert. Huh. I currently own, take a look at this, a whopping 0.000391 Bitcoins. So, I mean, I I don't want to brag, but I'm a little bit of an expert. Xander's spreading lies. So, I'm not actually an expert, but I did a bunch of research on crypto, which I am going to share with you on this podcast so that I know, you know, all about crypto. So let's do it. Let's break down everything you need to know 
about crypto as someone who was not nerdy, geeky, internet, crypto, data, techie, nerdy, crazy. What do you say? If you're not like that, this podcast is for you. Let's learn about crypto together. Let's do that. And let's start with a basic question. What is a cryptocurrency? Because you've heard of crypto, you heard of cryptocurrency, but you may not know what the definition is. So according to NerdWallet, which is a pretty reputable source, pretty, I mean, as facts, according to NerdWallet, quote, a cryptocurrency or crypto is a digital asset, a digital or virtual currency that can circulate without the need for a central monetary authority, such as a government or bank. Instead, cryptocurrencies are created using cryptographic techniques that enable people to buy, sell, or trade them securely, unquote, and transaction and ownership data is stored in a digital ledger, which is typically known as a blockchain, which is a distributed ledger technology. You've probably heard of blockchain. You're like, what in the world is a blockchain? That's what a blockchain is. The blockchain stores all records of transactions and crypto ownership, which is basically the only real big regulation of crypto right now, as the blockchain is the only thing that prevents copies of crypto actually being made. Because the government or these different banks don't control the crypto. These blockchains do, basically. And in order for the people who come up with these crypto coins to have them verifiable so that people will actually buy them because they want it to be a smart asset, smart investment, they make sure that they have these blockchains, which have security, which makes sure they are reliable and verified. So there you go. Good to know. But even compared to other financial investments like stocks, crypto is seen as having higher price volatility and higher risk. And it's also a lot newer of a phenomenon. Like Bitcoin, you all know Bitcoin, that's the largest cryptocurrency that's out there, came out in 2009. That was, it's hard to believe, but that was 13 years ago. But, you know, thinking about stocks, bonds, all that stuff, that's minuscule, 13 years. Bitcoin was the first modern cryptocurrency when that was 2009. And since then, there are now nearly 20,000 separate crypto coins that are traded publicly. So there's Bitcoin, and then there's thousands of others that we've never heard of. But they're out there. And each individual unit of a cryptocurrency is a coin or a token. That's what it's called, which can be used for any number of things, depending on the crypto. Like some can be used to exchange for goods and services, like an actual currency, like a dollar or a euro or whatever. And others can be used for specific programs like games or financial products. It all depends on the crypto coin or token that you buy. Like you can buy Bitcoin and that's kind of like a digital currency. So you can actually buy and sell stuff if a business accepts Bitcoin. But for others, you can't do that. They have separate purposes. So in that way, crypto is like totally different from other investments like stocks. But actually, in this sense, Crypto is like stocks in that you can buy a coin on a crypto marketplace or an exchange. Like with stocks, you go on your TD Ameritrade account or your E-Trade account and you buy a stocks or your Fidelity account and you buy stocks. With crypto, there are several exchanges where you can buy crypto like Coinbase, Crypto.com. There's a ton. And the thing is, like with TD Ameritrade and E-Trade and Fidelity, you know, you usually have the same options as regard to which stocks you can buy. With all these different exchanges, some of them have the crypto coin you might be looking for, some of them don't. Like the type of coin or the cryptocurrency that you actually want may not be on crypto.com, but it might be on Coinbase. So it's very different in that sense and not like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to be on all of them. But like if I had a little teeny tiny cryptocurrency coin, it might be listed on crypto.com, but 
It might not be on Coinbase. So it varies in that way. And just looking at cryptocurrency overall, there's a lot of positives surrounding cryptocurrency. There's a lot of negatives too, but I'm going to get to that. We're going to start with the positives because we always start on the positive side. Lots of people like that it has little relation to the traditional financial system. If you want to be edgy, this is the thing for you. Meaning that central banks don't manage the money supply and can't reduce the value of that money. It was also found last year by the Pew Research Center that minority communities are more likely than white Americans to say that they've invested in, traded, or used a cryptocurrency. And you've also got the blockchain technology, which can also be more secure than traditional payment systems, even as a decentralized system. Fact, Nugget! So those are a couple of the positives. The negatives now, it's like, I've been hyping up crypto now, and you're like, Xander, if it was this great, I wouldn't be having questions. But you might be having questions, and that's why there's a bunch of negatives, which I'm going to read off here. Starting with a positive that I just named, the blockchain technologies, which haven't been widely adopted yet. And that could actually hinder any potential development to the tech if it isn't further adopted. If it's not, that could minimize future returns on your money and other investors' money, which, I mean, you want money. There's also the fact that crypto prices tend to change more rapidly than traditional stocks. This could definitely hurt if you're a short-term investor and the prices swing downward rapidly, which has happened before. Crypto crash is a real thing, and it has happened to many people. Of course, the opposite has also happened, because you've also seen wild swings in the positive direction, which means you get a massive return on your investment in a short amount of time, which has also happened before. But the potential, because you can't, like a stock, you can't predict what the price is going to do. So the potential for a wild swing in price deters many from investing. I'll give you an example. You know Bitcoin. You know the Bitcoin craze. It happened in 2017, then it dropped for a little bit, and then it came way back up. But this year, it's also gone crazy because right now, as of Tuesday, Bitcoin was trading for about $20,197. So now you understand why I have very little of it. Back in March, it was up to 47000 but before the end of last year, it was above 64000 Chill out. So that's a wild swing in the price. And there's also the fact that while, at least in the United States and most other countries around the world, crypto is, I mean, compared to other investments, relatively unregulated. But that could change in the next few years because crypto is very new. And there's been a lot of cryptocurrencies, uh, different crypto coins that have come out in the last few years. So governments are, you know, they're not saying do what you want. They're looking at it right now and basically like, what are we going to do with this? That's the approach they're taking right now. So that could change in the next few years. But then there's all those negatives. But a huge deterrence to crypto may be its impact on the environment, which you know is very important from listening to this podcast because we have talked about the environment, pollution, green energy a ton on this podcast. There's several episodes I could refer to you in the past that we have done on those topics. But in order to provide and confirm transactions as well as provide security, many cryptocurrencies, most notably Bitcoin, need to mine. Now, I'm not talking about going into an actual mine and start digging because that wouldn't make any sense. But crypto mining is the process of getting new crypto coins that are bought and sold by users. And that is done not by going into a coal mine. Are you sure? But it is done by a process described as proof of work, which allows users to validate cryptocurrency transactions by solving a complex math problem on a computer. Not in the wilderness, in the comfort of your own home. Or probably not, because I'm not talking about like 
2 plus 2 to the 5th power divided by n squared. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about crazy computer math stuff. Like, it takes an absolutely insane amount of energy and power to mine crypto on your computer. So the computer is basically running programs which are trying to solve the problem. Like, we couldn't do this as average humans. 2 plus 2 is not the problem. So the more power that the computer has, the greater chance that a transaction is going to be validated. However, that computer needs a lot of power. And the normal crypto buyer and seller doesn't need to do this. You don't need to have this crazy computer running these math problems to buy crypto. This is only for the crypto to become actually available to you to buy so that it's put on the Coinbase. You can download the crypto app or Coinbase or whatever and just say, I want to buy this and you'll have it. But crypto mining is for creating the cryptocurrency. And that takes a lot of energy. And that has created a problem because it was estimated by the University of Cambridge that Bitcoin generates 132.48 terawatt hours annually of energy, which surpassed the entire annual energy usage of the country of Norway in 2020 at 123 terawatt hours. So China saw this problem and bans crypto mining last year. But of course, China is not the only country in the world. So that has shifted a bunch of the strain on the United States, which now accounts for 34.5% of the world's crypto mining, which results in 40 billion pounds, billion with a B, of carbon dioxide being produced by U.S. Bitcoin mining. That's a lot of numbers. That is a lot. And as we know from previous podcasts, you'd have carbon dioxide in the air. But a ton of it like that is not a good thing. So Bitcoin mining is using a ton of energy, and that is resulting in more carbon dioxide and pollution in the air, which is bad. Now, this isn't the process for all cryptocurrencies, but it is for the majority of them. However, there are a couple of alternatives to proof of work that don't produce as much pollution or require as much of a strain on resources. Those include proof of stake, which is not the food, but it doesn't use as much energy, but it has been criticized for systemic inequities, so that might not be too good. But there's also proof of burn, which does not mean actually burning something. Like we're not actually mining, we're not actually burning something, but it does involve removing coins from circulation. So the more coins that you burn, the faster you mine. And it was created specifically to address environmental concerns, but it's only been taken up by one major cryptocurrency so far, which is Slimcoin. Shout out, because you can buy that currently at three cents. So how about that? But you've also got proof of capacity and proof of elapsed time, which are both meant to cut down on any environmental negatives. So you do have several cryptocurrencies and the industry as a whole trying to be more environmentally friendly by cutting down on the energy it takes to mine because cryptocurrency mining has become one of the top energy users in the world. And a bunch are trying to change that or at least not make it as environmentally unfriendly, trying to make it environmentally friendly, which is something that Ethereum is doing, the second largest cryptocurrency on the market, which is moving to proof of stake from proof of work. So how about that? But the largest cryptocurrency by far, Bitcoin, you know, still is not moving away from proof of work. And that may put a damper on larger efforts for crypto to become more environmentally friendly. But what could also help is a shift towards using renewable energy sources. Ooh! Which have been talked about extensively on this podcast, as you know. If they weren't chugging out the coal and the oil and all the fumes, and we're using solar, wind, 
hydro, all that stuff. I mean, that would be a lot better. Then they can use all the energy they want, as long as we have some. Because everybody needs energy. Because without energy, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast right now. And then you'd have no energy for facts, and that'd be terrible. So that's basically what cryptocurrency as a whole is all about. But now let's get into a couple of the most popular cryptocurrencies out there to familiarize yourself. And you've probably heard of some of these before. We have to, of course, start with the one that everyone knows, because I've talked about it on this podcast, Bitcoin, the one that started the crypto craze a few years ago. And it was started in 2009 with the purpose of being a new electronic cash system that is fully peer-to-peer with no trusted third party. So technically, if a business accepts it and you own it, you could purchase goods and services with Bitcoin. Of course, you all know, one Bitcoin is right now 20 something thousand dollars. But it's not, you know, I'm not buying an Apple for two Bitcoin, which is actually 40 something thousand dollars. No, it's a different conversion. But the history of Bitcoin's price remained under $1,000 up until the beginning of 2017. 2017, five years ago, is when the whole Bitcoin craze began. Because it began the year under $1,000 at about $900. And by the end of the year, it was up to $19,000. So you would have gotten a good bang for your buck right there. But it fell back since then. But at the end of 2020, going into 2021, during the pandemic, there was another craze because the price got as high as $60,000. But there's been a dip pretty recently throughout most of this year, and the price is down to just over $20,000. So that's Bitcoin. The second largest cryptocurrency, which I talked about, Ethereum which is a decentralized software platform that enables smart contacts and decentralized applications, also known as dApps, to be built and run without any downtime, fraud, control, or interference from a third party. This is meant to create a suite of decentralized financial products that anyone in the world can use. And right now, Ethereum, as I said, the second largest digital currency by market cap, is trading at about $1,570. But like, I told you I own 0.003 something of Bitcoin. You don't need to buy one Bitcoin. They split it up. Like a stock share. So you don't have to buy an actual, you don't have to save up $20,000, whatever, to buy a Bitcoin. You can buy a little teeny tiny piece of a Bitcoin. Or an Ethereum. And another thing about the massive price swings, which actually happened this week. Monday. Monday of this week, Ethereum was trading at $1,716. On Tuesday, it was at $1,578. That's almost a $1,500 swing in 24 hours. Man, that was rough. Which is pretty insane. The stock market on Tuesday was down 1,300 points. That was the worst day in two years or something like that. And that was crazy. That happens a lot. Maybe not to that extent. But massive price swings happen with a ton of crypto coins all the time. And so that's Ethereum. So with Ethereum, you can't actually use it to go to Walmart and buy something like you could with Bitcoin. I don't think they accept Bitcoin at Walmart, but like you could go somewhere and if they accept Bitcoin, you can buy something with Bitcoin. With Ethereum, you can't do that. But you can do it with like a stock where you buy it and the price can go up and up and then you can sell it and you get a return on your investment. You can do that with all crypto coins. It's a fact. Or you could lose money if you buy it and then it goes down and you sell it, which I would not recommend. But a couple of the other notable crypto coins, there's Tether, which is a stable coin. A stable coin aims to peg their market value to a currency or other external reference point to reduce volatility. Stable coins, there's a bunch of stable coins. Tether's just probably the most notable one. There's even a USD coin, a US dollar coin, which actually pegs its price to the US dollar. And it does that by using fiat collateralized reserves, meaning it holds an amount of fiat currency equal to the amount of USD coin 
in circulation, which is, I mean, you can buy USD coin as a cryptocurrency. How about that? So those are just some, I mean, that was just four, four of some of the thousands of cryptocurrencies that you can research and invest in. There's a ton, like Dogecoin, which I would not recommend. And now, finally, Xander, please tell me, is crypto a good investment? Well, I am not an expert, so I am not going to tell you if crypto is a good investment or not, or I'm not going to tell you whether or not to buy crypto. The point of this podcast was basically to inform you about crypto, because there's a lot of people who are just looking at crypto, or maybe have even invested in crypto, and they're like, I have no idea what cryptocurrency is. What's crypto mining, Bitcoin mine? What's a Bitcoin? I have no clue, but I bought some. Well, if you're going to buy some, you should probably know what it is, first off. You should probably know what cryptocurrency is, and then what Bitcoin is and what you can use it for. So that's basically what this podcast was used for. So it's not for me to say whether crypto is a good investment, but it could be for you to say for yourself, if you actually do your research, have some money to invest, and are willing to play the long game, I would say why not? It also might not hurt too bad if you invest in like one a hundredth or a thousandth of a Bitcoin which I have, which did not cost very much money to see it eh, not do so well very recently. But that's another story. But the thing is, crypto is a growing investment product for many in the United States and around the world, especially after Bitcoin exploded in popularity in 2017. And you might be thinking about it, especially after if you own some stock and Tuesday was a rough day for you. But you need to make sure that you actually know what you're doing. And that is good financial advice from Xander on Xander's Facts. Debatable. So there you go with cryptocurrency. But I did have one more question regarding cryptocurrency. I was like, there are over 20,000 cryptocurrencies out there. Why don't I have my own cryptocurrency? So I asked the Google machine... Can you actually make your own cryptocurrency? And the answer that I found was yes, you can. You can make your own crypto. I got so excited. I was like, well, of course I'm going to make my own cryptocurrency. I can call it Xander coin, fact coin, ZF coin, Xander's facts coin. I could name it all kinds of things. I could promote the podcast. You could own a piece of the podcast, Xander's facts coin. But then, so the answer was yes. Then I went a little deeper into the Google machine and found some reliable sources. And I saw that you can make your own cryptocurrency, but it usually takes an average of ten to thirty thousand dollars to start a cryptocurrency. So whoops. Then I was like, you know, do I really need my own cryptocurrency? And at that price point I decided the answer was a unilateral no. So that was kind of sad. But if you wanted to start your own crypto coin, you could. I'm just saying. So Xander's not going to do that for a while until Xander's Facts podcast goes crazy and he starts getting the big bucks. But if you wanted to do that, if you've got a couple thou that you want to throw out there, you could start your own Xander's Facts coin. I'm just saying. So there you go. So all of that is the lowdown on what you need to know about crypto. So now you can invest responsibly, like Xander, maybe. Do I invest responsibly? Hopefully, because if I don't, this would be a bad podcast. But I'm not telling you one way or another, you should invest in crypto. Oh, no, you shouldn't invest in crypto. I'm saying those are the facts regarding cryptocurrency. Do your own research, make your own decisions. It's your money. And if you wanted to share it with Xander's facts, you know, I wouldn't be against that. If you made some money off crypto. Get that dough. I mean, it's only fair. So there you go. Cryptocurrency. Now you know your crypto. So that's cryptocurrency. That's the big topic for this week. And I also, to wrap up the podcast, wanted to talk a little bit about what happened this weekend. Because in the United States of America, for the first time in 2022, this weekend was the first full weekend of football of the year and oh my gosh it 
was glorious. The weekend that was in football. And I got to tell you, since this podcast has come out, I know this is going to seem very off topic, but it won't. Since this podcast has come out, it was announced that the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, passed away, 96 years old. Hats off. That resulted in the English Premier League postponing all their games for last weekend, and three of them for this weekend, including Leeds and Chelsea, which I got upset about, but I was like, football's going to be on. So actually, and this is going to sound bad, Uh oh. but the Premier League not being on really helped me get into the football groove this weekend. So actually, I think they should do that every year. The first full weekend of football, they should have Premier League. And I know it was for bad circumstances that are mourning in England, which I actually wrote about. I wrote about Queen Elizabeth II on Xander's Weekend Facts, which you should go check out. But they didn't have Premier League this past weekend, which now it makes sense. So I was in full American football mode this weekend. College on Saturday, the pros on Sunday. It just felt right. Football is back. And so is Xander's analysis of it which you probably shouldn't take too seriously. But you should take seriously our Xander's Facts season previews for college and the NFL, which I did the past two weeks on this podcast, which you should go take a look at because you need my Super Bowl and my college football playoff national championship picks because those are still alive. So the weekend that was in football, let's start with college football. It was week two in college football because last weekend, week two, The previous weekend was week one, which they had games Sunday, Monday, Friday, Thursday, and Saturday. This weekend, they had a couple Thursday and Friday, but it was mostly Saturday. And on Saturday, the college slate started off with a bang. Big noon Saturday, Texas hosting number one, Alabama. And Alabama... Did not look that great in Austin. Maybe because the field temperature was apparently like 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is absolutely ridiculous. Why they had to have that game at noon, ugh, that was very silly, but also probably would have affected Texas too. And Alabama's in Alabama, and like, it's south, it's hot, so that probably wasn't it. But Texas, Texas looked pretty good. They were leading, actually, for a large chunk of that game. Alabama in the fourth quarter had to come back. They kicked a field goal with under a minute to go. They hadn't kicked, if they hadn't made that field goal, they would have lost. Alabama won 20 to 19 over Texas. And everybody's like, are the hordes back? Is Texas back? Because Texas hasn't been good. Well, I mean, Texas actually looked really good at that game. They also looked good in the Oklahoma game and they blew that lead last year too. So you never know. But this year, They have quarterback Quinn Ewers, who looked really good for Texas. Their offense looked pretty good against Alabama's defense. And Alabama's defense has everybody going to the NFL. So if you look good against Alabama's defense, you're pretty good. But the thing is, he got injured in the game. And so he's going to be out for the next few weeks, actually, for Texas. Their backup quarterback didn't do that bad. He looked pretty good again against Alabama. Maybe it was an off day for Alabama. Nick Saban. You never know. But they only lost by one, 2019. But if they don't get Quinn Ewers back, that might be a little tricky for the Longhorns. So Texas did lose, but it was a respectable enough loss that they actually got bumped up into the top 25, which probably would have only happened for a school like Texas. But still, it was a very good game. And actually, the game aired on Fox, so their big noon Saturday thing. So they had to put it at noon, 11 a.m. in Texas. And it was actually the most streamed football game, college or pro, ever that aired on Fox. So about that? There were a lot of people watching. But some games that not as many people watched, but some bigger news happened. Because the upset didn't happen in Austin, Texas. But it did happen in some other unexpected places, including South Bend, Indiana and College Station, Texas, because there were two top 10 teams, Notre Dame and Texas A&M, who both lost at home to teams unranked from the Sun Belt Conference, the Fun Belt. Marshall beat Notre Dame 26-21 to 
and Appalachian State beat Texas A&M 17-14. So for Notre Dame, they lost to Ohio State in week one, and they actually looked okay in that game. I didn't think they would, but they lost to Marshall at home. So, I mean, that's not good. So Notre Dame starts the year at 0-2. They have become just the third team since the year 2000, since this millennium started, to start the season in the AP Top 5 preseason poll and lose their first two games of the season. Last time that happened was 2017 Florida State. Remember that year, they played number one Alabama. Florida State was number three beginning of the season, and Alabama crushed them. That was Jimbo's last year. They didn't do so well, and Jimbo was like, see ya, and he's off to Texas A&M. These are facts. Now, Texas A&M, ooh, they lost to Appalachian State. Appalachian State had a crazy game in week one against North Carolina. I think like, 60 points or so were scored in that game in the fourth quarter. Like, it was absolutely insane. But they lost to North Carolina. They beat Texas A&M on the road. And really, if you're Texas A&M, what excuse do you have? Because they got the number one overall recruiting class this year. So, you know, all the freshmen were playing. Well, apparently they're the best freshmen in the country. And they're playing Appalachian State, who has a tough time getting top 1,000 recruits. So you're playing Appalachian State. And the thing is, you haven't had terrible recruiting classes. They've been consistently top 10 or top 20 the last few years with Jimbo. So you should already have great talent. Like, why is Texas A&M losing? Is it because Jimbo isn't exactly that great of a coach? It seems like it. because. Texas A&M is supposed to be this mighty power with Jimbo, and they've got a ton of money, some of the most money in college football, and they get these top recruiting classes, and then they go 8-4. and four. They beat Alabama last year, but they still went 8-4. and four. So at some point, you gotta start questioning Jimbo. But Texas A&M is not, because they gave him, I guess it was 10 years, $100 million. They were like, Jimbo! Please coach our program national championship. They even gave him a plaque that says 20 dash dash college football national champion or something like that. Like they gave him a blank national championship plaque. That was dumb. And probably the only reason that he won the national championship in 2013 at Florida State was because as silly as it sounds now in 2022, he had Jameis Winston and that team was absolutely loaded. And probably in 2013, Jimbo was actually using new tactics on it for his offense, which now doesn't look too good. So, Texas A&M. And the other thing, if you've been online the last few days, you know also what's going on with Texas A&M. Because they have this thing, like a midnight yell or something. They all go, a bunch of the fans and whoever, go into the stadium at midnight before the game, I guess, and they have this yell thing where, you know, at Texas A&M, they've got the people in the overalls and they're yelling weird stuff. And they are making fun of Appalachian State for being hillbillies. Like, Texas A&M is making fun of someone for being hillbillies. Like, it's actually one of the cringiest videos I think I've ever seen. It was awful. And Texas A&M actually is trying to take it down now from the internet. They're issuing copyright complaints for everyone who posts it on Twitter. Ha ha, loser! But the full video is still on their YouTube channel. Like, they're... It's ridiculous. Texas A&M, I mean, seriously. But a team, actually, that decided to get rid of their coach was Nebraska. Because another Sunbelt team, the Fun Belt, as you know, had a great performance on the road. Georgia Southern defeated Nebraska 45-41. Now, Nebraska's not exactly a power, but they're Nebraska. You can't lose to Georgia Southern at home. And that's what the Nebraska administrators decided. And they were like, all right, Scott Frost, you're out of here. Scott Frost was their head coach. Scott Frost was their quarterback back when Tom Osborne was the coach. That was back when Nebraska was competing for national championships, back in the heyday of Nebraska football. They're not doing that anymore. 
So Scott Frost, he was the coach of that UCF team a couple years ago that went undefeated and beat Auburn in a big bowl game. So he goes to Nebraska, where he is an alum. He played, and everyone, he is the savior of Nebraska football. Well, he was bad. Like, he had a lot more losses than wins as a Nebraska coach, actually. So it did not turn out well. And the thing is, Nebraska's in the Big Ten, and I talked about that big Big Ten TV contract they got a couple weeks ago. So Scott Frost's buyout, so if they were going to fire him, his buyout that the school had to give him was $15 million in his contract. If they waited until October 1st, three weeks, it would have dropped, it would have been cut in half. The buyout would have gone from $15 million to $7.5 million. And they decided, you know what? No, we just have to cut this out now. So there you go with your big B1G, Big Ted money. They are using it to just give the coach $7.5 million to say, you know what? We can't stand another three weeks. You're out of here. And probably because Nebraska is not good. Need some ice for that sick burn. So then another upset. Number 19, Wisconsin lost at home to Washington State. I told you in my Pac-12 preview, Washington State had a new coach, and I don't think they'll be that great. But they beat Wisconsin. Wisconsin's kind of an ugly Big Ten West team, though, like Iowa, Nebraska, Purdue. Like, it's an ugly division with just ugly football. Like, not the universities or schools, but the way they play football is just... Ugly. Like, Iowa played South Dakota State in week one. Iowa won that game 7-3, to three, and they did not score a touchdown. They had a field goal and two safeties. What? Like, that is awful. Come on, man. And they lost to Iowa State this week, so it, the Big Ten West is just blocked. So Wisconsin lost to Washington State. They became the fourth team that was favored by 17.5 points or more to lose on Saturday. That is the first time that has happened in a single day in college since the FBS FCS split in 1978. Cool facts, bro. Big day for major upsets in college football on Saturday. And then you had number 20 Kentucky going into the swamp to beat Florida. Florida was unranked, but they barely beat Utah at home. And they fly up to number eight or nine or ten or whatever. Like, it was, ugh. And they lost to Kentucky, 26 to 16 in the SEC. So that was a little too high for the Gators. Now, another big time game, SEC, ACC. Last year, Tennessee and Pittsburgh played in Knoxville. Pittsburgh beat them. This year, they play in Pittsburgh and Tennessee wins. Number 24, Tennessee. Beat number 17 Pittsburgh on the road in overtime, 34 to 27. And Texas Tech had Houston, who was number 25, visiting. That was an upset that I called because Texas Tech won 33 to 30 in double overtime. And they stormed the field, apparently. They took down the goalposts for, I mean, that was double overtime, I guess. But also, here's the big shocker, I think, around college football. Notre Dame lost to Marshall. Texas A&M lost to Appalachian State. But here's the big thing. Here it comes. Kansas. Kansas football is 2-0. and How about that? Two wins to start the season for Kansas. There have been seasons recently where Kansas hasn't even sniffed two wins. They get two wins to start their season after a 55-42 to overtime win over West Virginia. So usually you don't get a two possession score to finish overtime because you only get one possession in overtime. But I, Kansas scored a touchdown and then they had a pick six to win the game when they were on defense. So Kansas beat West Virginia in overtime. How about that? They're two and oh. That was the weekend that was in college football and it was glorious. Week two. So now. To complete our weekend, on Sunday and Monday, we had the NFL, the National Football League, who last week I did my NFL season preview for, 
which you should go check out. And over to the NFL, the on Thursday night it actually started, the opening kickoff game, where the defending champions got their butts spanked on opening night on Thursday because the Buffalo Bills went to LA and they saw the Rams get their rings, hoist their championship banner and said, "Oh well." They handed it to the Rams 31 to 10. Los Angeles did not look like any good at all, and the Bills steamrolled them by 21 points. So that was Thursday. It wasn't that exciting. But then you go to Sunday, and we had a ton of exciting games on Sunday. We had a bunch of comebacks, including the Saints, who made a pretty incredible comeback to win against the Falcons 27-26. to Now, they probably shouldn't be coming back against the Falcons, who quarterback is Marcus Mariota, but they still did. And they still won. They're 1-0. Now, you also had whatever happened in Chicago. I guess you can call it a football game. But they were under a flash flood warning in Chicago. It was a monsoon what that game took place as. It was so bad, they had just laid new grass or whatever on Soldier Field a week before the game. And it looked horrible! Because, I mean, partly because it was raining inches an hour at a time. Like, it was really bad. But also... You couldn't see the lines on the field, and the sidelines were literally wiggling. Like, the lines were not straight because of the rain. It was awful. I think Fox had to put their own numbers on the field because you couldn't see the yard markers because of the rain. It was just terrible. Like, it was disgusting. Disgusting! But the Bears beat the 49ers 19-10. to So, it it was an ugly game. So there you go. And then you had a revenge game in Carolina. The Browns and the Panthers. Baker Mayfield, who we all know the situation about the Browns and their quarterback position. So they traded Baker Mayfield to the Panthers. Week one, they played well. Did not turn out so well for Baker Mayfield. The Panthers actually came back. They were leading 24-23 in that game. But the Browns had some time left. They got a last-second field goal. They won. The Browns, 26-24, spoiled any Baker Mayfield revenge with that win over the Panthers. And then you've got the Giants and the Titans. The Giants came back to win over the Titans, which made me a little happy. Even though they're an NFC East team, not the commies, who, But Saquon Barkley returned to his old self, and that helped me for my fantasy team. But he, I mean, we haven't seen Saquon Barkley, I mean pull off the things he was pulling off in his rookie season in a while but he looked really good in week one which could be a good sign for things to come for the new york giants who need it now the packers had no answers for the new look vikings offense they had a new head coach kevin o'connell who was the offensive coordinator for the rams last year he's now the head coach at minnesota and Minnesota's offense looked really good. The Vikings won 23-7. to But as I heard somewhere, apparently, and I saw last year too, the Packers also stunk on week one last year in their opening game. So maybe not a sign of things to come. Of course, they didn't go to the Super Bowl, but that doesn't mean they're going to be terrible this year. Now, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have Devontae Adams, and we also know he's a conspiracy theorist which you know go ahead with that you there's also the Bengals and the Steelers which was the first of two overtime games on Sunday the Steelers got a last second field goal to win in overtime they beat the Bengals 23 to 20 and then the Colts and the Texans were also tied at 20 entering overtime but they stayed tied at 20 entering overtime because they tied It was the first tie of the season, week one. How about that? Colts and Texans. With the Texans, I mean, the Colts, I picked them to win the AFC South. I thought they were going to be amazing. And the Texans, I was like, they don't really have anybody good. But it was in Houston, and the Texans held them to a tie, which, I mean, that's going to be counted as a win for Houston. Now, the other games that happened, 
Washington and Jacksonville. That game was actually pretty interesting because it went back and forth. Carson Wentz actually looked pretty good for the Washington Commies. I don't know. He did, though. And the Commies beat the Jaguars. The Lions came back against the Eagles. They were down by a bunch, but their comeback ended just short. They lost 38-35 to to the Eagles. The Ravens, of course, dominated the Jets 24-9. But the Brady-less Patriots, now the third season without Tom Brady, and the Patriots just did not look good in a 20-7 loss to the Dolphins. Also, the Chiefs dominated the Cardinals in Arizona 44-21. It was like, Patrick Mahomes doesn't need Tyreek Hill. He's got other players, like Travis Kelsey, who we threw to a bunch. The Chiefs dominated, and the Chargers escaped the Raiders at home with a 24-19 win. Justin Herbert also looked pretty good. Now, Sunday night. Sunday night, big hype game. And I believe it got the highest viewership for a week one game in five years. Everybody was watching Tampa Bay and Dallas in Jerry World, AT&T Stadium. The Cowboys offense, though, did not look that great on Sunday night football in a 19-3 loss to the Buccaneers. But that is probably due to the fact that they lost Jack Prescott. He injured his hand in the game and is now expected to be out six to eight weeks, which is, I mean, the last time that they lost. They lost Jack Prescott for, I believe, the season in week two a couple years ago. He's not going to be out the season, but they did not look good without him. He's a good quarterback for him. So... Dallas might be having some troubles. In the NFC East, where the Giants might look better, who knows about Washington? The Eagles, I picked them to win the division. I mean, they did allow the Lions to come back. But still, the Eagles' offense looks really good. They've got A.J. Brown now for Jalen Hurts to throw it to. The Eagles should be pretty good. So that might be a little tough, losing Dak for an extended amount of time for the Cowboys. And the Buccaneers... I mean, they didn't look great. They're going to lose Chris Godwin, apparently, for a few weeks now as a receiver, but Tom Brady's got a bunch. And he's 45 years old, which is still insane. So then, Monday night, Monday night, you know, on paper, Seahawks and Broncos, you're like, uh. But this is Russell Wilson's game back in Seattle. He was traded over the offseason to the Broncos. Wilson had been the starter at Seattle since he was drafted as a rookie. That was several years ago. He won a Super Bowl in Seattle. And so he's coming out. He's expecting cheers, standing ovation. And he comes out onto the field as a Denver Bronco in Seattle. And he got mercilessly booed. So sad. They were booing him when he came out of the tunnel on his first snap. Like, they were like, you know what? Uh, You're not on our team anymore. And he didn't go out, apparently, in the best of terms. So that may have had you know, something to deal with it. But they booed him. And it was not exactly the best of homecomings for Russell Wilson. That was a pretty close game on Monday night. At the end of the game, the Broncos were on offense and they were under their new head coach, Nathaniel Hackett. Nathaniel. But they looked totally mismanaged on offense. They were down one point. They ended up attempting a 64-yard field goal. You know, that did not go in. So the Broncos lost. The Seahawks spoiled Russell Wilson's trip back to the Pacific Northwest with a 17 to 16 win over the Broncos to close out week one in the NFL. Oh my gosh. It was wonderful having so much football to watch and everyone getting mad at me because I was watching so much football. It was incredible. So that was the weekend that was in football. And remember, that this year I am posting my weekly college and pro picks, predictions, Xander's Facts, exclusively on the Xander's Facts Sporting Club Instagram page, which you should go follow and check out. By the way, you can do that by going on Instagram, searching Xander's Facts SC. It's the little Xander's Facts ZF with the soccer ball, the blue image with white. You should check that out. You can also, there's a link in this episode's description. It's in the link tree. It's on the link tree, which is in this episode's description. You should check that out. So every week I'm going to be posting my picks for the games in college with the top 25 teams. And every 
NFL game. Xander's facts. So check that out. But next weekend is week three in college football. And among the notable college games next weekend, the only ranked matchup, two ranked teams, is number 13 Miami facing number 24 Texas A&M in College Station. Is the U back? Well, we might find out because, I mean, Texas A&M had a big embarrassing loss at home last weekend, so we'll see how they come out. And College Game Day is going to Boone, North Carolina, for the first time ever for Appalachian State's matchup with Troy. Not really for the matchup, but it should be pretty cool in Boone. And Appalachian State just got a huge win over Texas A&M. So that'll be pretty cool for college football on Saturday. But then you've got the NFL. It's week two in professional football next week. And some of the top games for this coming weekend includes the premiere of Thursday Night Football on Amazon Prime Video. It's no longer on Fox. It is exclusively streaming Thursday Night Football. is, And they're starting out with a pretty good matchup. Chargers at Chiefs. That's a good one. And they're trying to drive everyone over to streaming. We'll see if it works. And then Sunday, 1 o'clock, you've also got Bucks and Saints, NFC South. Then 425, Bengals and Cowboys, which was going to be the game of the week. Still is going to be, but I mean, both of those teams lost. They still, the Bengals still have Joe Burrow, but the Cowboys are now without their quarterback. And then Sunday night, you've got the Bears and the Packers, NFC North. And Monday night, Monday night, you don't have a a doubleheader. There's two games, though. It's a twofer because it's 7.15 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. You've got the Titans and the Bills. And then 8.30 on ABC and ESPN Plus, you've got the Vikings and the Eagles. So a Monday night twofer. You're going to have two games going on at the same time. How about that? Xander's Facts Football Facts. And again, Xander's Facts SC on Instagram for my weekly picks. So there you go. That's my football update from the weekend that was, because it was a glorious weekend in football. And that's what I got for you on this week's edition of the Zader Specs Podcast. Thank you all for listening. And remember, if you liked all the facts that I had on this week's edition of the podcast, remember to follow the Zader Specs Podcast, download this episode, episode 76, rate the podcast, review the podcast, then go on all your socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, search, follow, like, Xander Specs, that's Xander with a Z. And most importantly, remember to tell your friends, spread the facts! Xander's Facts Podcast. Tell all your friends about the podcast, about Xander's Weekend Facts, the newsletter every Sunday morning. You can get it in your inbox on the link on this episode's description. Check it out on YouTube. This episode and a bunch of our previous episodes are on YouTube. And the Xander's Facts link tree has all the Xander's Facts links that you need. So that is episode 76 of the podcast. Next week, we are not going to have a new episode of the podcast. We are taking a little bit of a break to get ready for the fall because this fall, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about. This fall, I've already got episodes planned out. We're going to have midterm, we're going to have multiple episodes dedicated to the midterms. The World Cup is this fall, our NBA season preview, of course, football, other topics. It is going to be a massive fall in the Xander's Facts podcast. So we got to take a week, iron things out, make sure everything is in order to get ready because we're not going to have a podcast next week, but in the weeks after, at the end of this month, in October, in November, in December, we are going to have a ton of facts that you are going to love. Xander's Facts. So no new episode next week A Xander's Facts. Flashback is what we're going to have. And we're going to have episode 77 in two weeks on Wednesday, September 28th. How about that? So that is it. That is a wrap on episode 76 of the Zader Specs podcast. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see y'all with episode 77 in two weeks.